Good evening, I'm Kim Christensen. And I'm Kyle Clark. A fire chief retired after an investigation found he made inappropriate sexual comments about women, opening up his department to potential lawsuits. A third party recommended his firing from South Adams County Fire. Then the city of North Glen hired him to work in HR. Here is 9 News reporter Kelly Rinke. That's one of the most horrific days in the Colorado Fire Service that we would ever This is Kevin Vinsel, then so fire chief of South Adams insane. County, meeting survivors of the Marshall Fire in 2022. Well, I've been in the fire service for 26 years now. A little more than a year after our story, the agency's board of directors hired an outside investigator to look into Vinsel. After more than 20 current and former employees were interviewed, that outside investigation recommended termination. Documents obtained by Nine News detail why. The investigation found he talked about him employees poor performance behind their back and made inappropriate sexual comments about women. That report also says he let an EMS manager tutor his son during work hours, expecting he'd be hired because, quote, the union owes me. That didn't stop City of North Glen from hiring him. Bensel's new title is risk manager in North Glen's HR department. I asked the city if they knew about this investigation. A spokesperson said they were not aware of any information I shared in my email. Part of the reason a third party recommended he be fired was because he posed a risk of potential lawsuits. Vinsel's current job involves professional administrative work and preparing responses in lawsuits. In an eight-page response to the investigation, Vinsel told the board he feels this is not a true and accurate review of his reputation, and he feels like he's suffering retaliation for doing his job and holding employees to account. While termination was recommended, the board's president told the department in an email he was retiring. That same email says Vincel was staying on as a consultant to the board to help with the smooth transition of his duties. South Adams County Fire says the city of North Glen talked to the board president about Vincel, but the HR position was not mentioned. Kelly Rinke, 9 News. Let's take a live look outside at Coors Field. The Rockies just lost to the Padres 3-1. Oh, on. We did enjoy, though, a mostly sunny day after a cloudy, foggy, cold and snowy weekend for part of it. Yeah, this was Saturday at the ballpark. Workers had to hurry up and plow all the snow off Coors Field to get ready for Saturday night's game there. Friday night's game was postponed due to the weather to Sunday. And then all of a sudden, Lauren Robinson, boom, here we go. Back into uh, <laughs> seasonable temperatures. That's right. We made a quick turnaround this weekend. We had snow on the ground Saturday night. Then by Sunday evening, we were warm. All of that snow was melted, unless you're one of those shadowy hot spots where it takes a little longer. But we saw another warm day today. We made it into the middle 70s in Denver. Right now, we're cooling down, of course, at 9 o'clock in the evening. 63 degrees right now at DIA. Most of the front range in eastern plains in the 50s and lower 60s. We're seeing those 40s and 50s right now now in the high country, low 70s right now out west in Grand Junction. Now the sun has set, we're starting to cool down, but we're still well, war, uh, quite a bit warmer than we were just this time yesterday. We're 15 degrees warmer than we were just 24 hours ago in Denver. A lot of the front range in Eastern Plains, anywhere from 5 to 10 to 15 degrees warmer than we were this time last night. So we're going to continue to see warm weather uh, for a good portion of our seven day forecast. After a quick drop in temperatures tomorrow, we start to approach the 80s by Wednesday. Day. Now, we take a look at our HD Doppler radar. Some areas saw some very brief spotty showers, nothing widespread, nothing heavy, and a lot of areas that were showing some uh, rain on the radar that evaporated before it made its way to the ground. So what we've really been watching through the most of the afternoon has been the high country into the foothills, just some brief quick showers there. Now, as we move into the day tomorrow, we're going to see those slightly cooler temperatures, which actually are closer to seasonal for this time of year when those highs drop into the low 60s tomorrow. We're also going to watch for another Another round of those very brief spotty storms where most of us stay dry, but you could get a quick storm overhead. And as we prepare for next weekend, we're going to see cooler, wetter weather for next weekend. I'll have all of those details for you just ahead in my full seven day forecast. A man is dead after a boat capsized this morning in the Aurora Reservoir. Police say they responded about 930 this morning. Park Rangers pulled the man out of the water. He died at the hospital. Firefighters say no one else was involved and they think the death was accidental. Some parents are worried after an elementary school reported an attempted kidnapping during recess. It happened Friday at Black Forest Hills Elementary School in the Cherry Creek School District. Aurora police say 33-year-old Solomon Galligan approached kids near the playground and tried to grab one of them. Police say the children ran away screaming stranger danger. 
Officers found him at a Walgreens down the street and arrested him. Galligan is a registered sex offender. We do not feel safe. I feel like if they would have come here Monday morning and been like, we messed up, this is where we failed, and here's our plan to do better, instead we're being met with, we'll take this into account. Cherry Creek Schools released a statement saying, in part, we take all safety concerns seriously and have launched an investigation into the incident that happened Friday. A little girl safe now after the car that she was in was stolen. We say a man named Kirk Abercrombie stole a running car from a 7-Eleven in Aurora last night. A six-year-old girl was in the back seat while her mom was inside the store. Police quickly put out an Amber Alert. While every stolen car is important to somebody, when someone's life is involved outside of just the property, that certainly escalates our response. Little girl's mom had left her cell phone in the car, which allowed police to track it. Larimer County deputies arrested Abercrombie along I-25 near Loveland. The former Clear Creek County deputy on trial for the shooting death of Christian Glass has chosen not to testify in his own defense. Andrew Bune told the judge that today before court recessed for the day. His defense team argues that body camera video doesn't tell the whole story. They also argue Glass wasn't experiencing mental health crisis and was under the influence of drugs or alcohol at the time. Today's defense witness was a police use of force force expert who said that lethal force was reasonable because Glass posed a threat to officers. The prosecution rested its case last week after arguing it was, quote, unreasonable and excessive for Bune to shoot into Glass's SUV, killing him. Bune is charged with second-degree murder, official misconduct, and reckless endangerment. In a couple of weeks, RTD will start having police officers on duty 24-7. A staffing shortage meant that RTD was not consistently able to have officers on overnight everywhere they wanted them. Right now, RTD has 61 sworn officers, but more than 50 additional officers are scheduled to graduate from police academy this year. As state and federal officials try to block a merger between Kroger and Albertsons, the grocery stores have a new plan. If the merger goes through, they would sell nearly all of the state's Albertsons stores. The companies say they will sell nearly 600 stores across the country to CNC Wholesale, including 91 Safeways in Colorado. Under the deal, Kroger and Albertsons would license the Safeway name to CNC in Colorado and Arizona. Colorado and the FTC sued to block the nearly $25 billion merger, saying it would hurt shoppers already facing rising food costs. The companies hope the new deal will pacify regulators so they'll allow the merger to go through. A DMV in western Colorado is now closed. It's a ripple effect of a bridge closure on Highway 50 over the Blue Mesa Reservoir. CDOT inspectors shut down the bridge after finding a crack in a steel bridge support last week. That's forcing people traveling between Gunnison and Montrose to take hours-long detours. Gunnison County says the state has now shut down the Gunnison Driver's License Office until further notice, telling people to use services online instead. Road crews have opened up an alternate route. They're stressing it is for locals only and it is only open for short windows. The Lake City Cutoff's an unpaved mountain road and CDOT is only opening it for an hour every morning and night.